the other way. Put your hand down if you think there's something other than physical stuff that needs modeling. Okay, did anyone drop their hand there? What do you mean by physical stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, no, 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 let's put it this way. Keep, okay, let's start again. If, if you think uh, uploading is feasible, hands up. Okay. Put your hand down if you think there's anything that can't be described by physical science, but which needs to be in the model. Right, see a couple of people now. Let's see, there you go. What is physical science? Any, okay, okay um, if you fundamentally believe that there is, there is some physical process, <coughs> I mean, uh, no, there's, there's something beyond <coughs> the physical process that needs to be included. If you had an omnipotent power to model any physical process, if you think your simulation is still going to be missing something out, take it. We do have an omnipotent power to model any physical process, though. I mean, I mean, I mean, you get randomness in quantum mechanics, and where is that randomness coming from? Well, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is that if you could model, okay, let's, let's, if you could model every neuron, every molecule, every molecule, you can even model somehow subatomic processes. Do you imagine something's being looked at? If so, you could. All right, what I was going to say next is then um, to just go through the list, to narrow it down. So if you can, um, well, basically, who's, uh, actually, I'll put your hands down. <laughs> who, who, which one, can someone, can someone be a brave soul? Who thinks they might have sort of a, a bog standard idea of what you would have to model in order to simulate consciousness? Yeah, go on. Yeah. What, what have we got to get? Patterns of information. Okay. Which That's can cool. be done in any medium and frame. Yeah, but which information? I mean, can you throw out the information that, um, that is represented by um, anything below a neural level? It kind of depends how, how, how yes. much fidelity you want to, to the original mind. I mean, in terms of, you could probably throw out quite a lot of oh, detailed you know. processes. How about, what are some of those detailed human, processes? But not quite the same human. You say that, but we have no empirical reason to believe that whatsoever. There might be something intrinsic to the nature of human consciousness that is in those fine grained details, and your whole simulation might fall out. I think the reason that I would personally find that implausible, and also the chemical and uh, quantum stuff, is that basically the brain gets knocked hither and yon by chemicals washing through it all the time. And if any of that low level stuff was going to be important, it would be knocked out of whack by anything as strong as an aspirin. That's a bit like saying cars drive through storms all the time, and if any of the low-level stuff, like having tires, were important, then you know it's just like saying, "Oh well, I could mo I could create another car that has everything except the tires because they're only a small part of the equation, or the fuel because all this big stuff is going on all the time." You know, it, the two things don't connect. It's not a. It's not. Logically, what I, what I mean is that all the all this stuff, low-level stuff does get moved around by all this this. Um, what I'm going back. Yeah, but that, that's maybe maybe that's where the Get magic happens in the moving around. Yeah. There's a process. Drink a cup of coffee and it shifts this way. Drink a bottle of beer and it shifts that way. But the the shifts uh, don't completely disrupt the structure of the network. No, no. But the structure of the network is being driven by process. I mean, at whatever level you're modelling, there will be more fine-grained processes. It, it and at seems what point do you more stop? plausible to assume a stable process sitting on top of stuff than an infinitely complex, low-level process that somehow manages to dodge every bullet. And see, I think a quantum physicist or a lot of... See, I mean, well, a, a sci, quantum physicist aside, because they tend to muddy the waters, <laughs> there are a lot of... Um, say you... See, there might be two people who hold a view very much like yours, one that says we don't have to model neurons. I think cortical columns was it that they were thinking about, but yeah. Yeah, but I mean, but what if someone says, so hang on, you're not going to model this particular cluster of neural activity. You're just going to model its effects upstream on that other brain area. Do you not worry you're going to miss something faster? Now? now, sorry, I don't mean to pick on you, it's just mm -hmm. you're being vocal. <laughs> so, but, um, sorry, yeah. I don't think you can really answer these technical arguments without dealing with some pretty significant physical stuff. Well, that, that's true. They do get entangled pretty quickly. You know, yeah. What do you have to emulate? You know, there's, there's a, a whole set of physical laws. If I drop this pen, it's going to run the table. It's all this solid stuff. And, yeah, yeah. You know, within the limits of, of quantum mechanics, it's all predictable. It's certainly not something that's um, 
uh, you've got a choice. This, this pen, when I start to write with it, it doesn't have a choice whether it leaves an ink trail behind. As far as I know, I choose to come came here and, and, and listen to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I could have been sitting in the park. So what is it about my configuration that gives me the power to make that choice and, and to experience reality subjectively that this pen and this mobile phone don't have? We're all made of the same stuff, but something somewhere is different, isn't it? Yeah. There's got to be something in each of us that doesn't exist in this pen or this mobile phone. And information. And, well, is it just information? <laughs> is it just a configuration of information that gives you a perception of reality? Well, that seems very hard to believe. information has to be able to yeah. actualise. I mean, if, if, for example, if we were able to, um, within the limits of ethics, take a sword to the top of your head and lift your brain out, and assume you were supplied with oxygen, etc., it would still be your pattern, you would still be living, assuming that it is all in the brain. But without anything to actualise it, basically, you wouldn't necessarily be able to demonstrate intelligence. You would have a brain in a box, which may or may not be conscious. Can I just... Um, no now, that, I, I can now, see where this is going to... This, this is one of the kings about whole brain emulation. Because you're saying about emulating the brain. Are you saying about emulating the brain circuit diagrams and everything else? Because the biggest what? problem, I think, at the moment with all the IBM stuff is all of our circuit diagrams are all derived from chopping up live brains or very fuzzy sort of mm -hmm. MRI data on, on activity patterns in, in active brains. We don't have, we have wiring diagrams, but we don't have the software that's running, if you get what I mean, on those diagrams. Well, they, I, I'll, I'll stop you there, um, mainly because I can sort of characterise where this is going and make my point, but also the, this is the stuff of a whole series of conferences, and it <coughs> rapidly turns into angels on the heads of pins. And, the beauty of sort of Western civilization is that we tend to be relatively empirical creatures and that we'll just give it a crack and see what happens. And you know, at, yeah. at the end of the day, if you've got the machinery and it seems to be doing a good job, then we kind of retrofit the philosophy to say, well, that's kind of what I thought might be happening. Yeah, you know. Bob and he says he's Bob, then he's Bob. Uh, yeah. Now, there are, of course, problems with this, which we'll touch on without getting too worked up about it. You know, pod people, people who say they're Bob, and actually I'm Bob and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, you, but I will say one thing. That you're saying, well, are we talking about circuit diagrams or whatever? That's why I wanted to say that. This whole category, there's all these technologies I'm talking about today. There are a lot of different things that might go by the same name. Whole brain simulation or uh, virtual reality or artificial intelligence, whatever. When you're assessing the feasibility of these things, work out what the hell you're talking about. I mean, a philosopher, it's the first thing they would do. Define terms. What exactly are you telling me is not feasible? Or is feasible, or whatever. Okay, so just um, in the same spirit, Here's a, just one of many, many possible questions you could throw out there about um, virtual autonomous zone scenarios. You know, could it be, um, I mean, in what sense, could it be both technically feasible to build a VR platform that can host a whole bunch of AIs or uploads if they're possible, but also autonomous, presumably using somebody's resources to run this machine? Why is autonomous important? I mean, it's you know it's, it's there in the definition, but it doesn't seem to be awfully important as far as definite, as far as having virtual world is concerned. Well, no, that's true. It doesn't. It's just that people do throw around this scenario and consider, and they normally have. It's partly because of the likes of Greg Egan. You know, they do imagine a machine buried under the snow somewhere. It's it's like the equivalent. It's basically a, a simulation version of the why don't all the transhumanists go off and live on an oil rig scenario, you know, let's go live somewhere where the state can't tell me what to do, man, you know, it's basically the same thing, all the uploads go off and live on a big block of nano where buried under the ice somewhere, you know, is that even feasible? Um, now, I'm not saying is it tractable, but is it actually logically possible? Um, and that, that's all I'm saying is that's question, that's the kind of question we should be asking. Like, so in this case here, like, um, are, you, are you on your own hardware? And, you know, it becomes, again, an economic question, which is incredibly hard to, well, you can't really do much with. But if you're, if you're saying, oh, no, it could be on public networks, it could be on the same networks that the rest of humanity uses, in which case, in what sense is that autonomous? I mean, is it encrypted? Um, that kind of thing. So, you know, with the virtual reality stuff, I, I tend to run over these issues a, li a little more quickly because they're, they're less technical. Um, they're more about politics, economics, personal, personal preferences, that kind of stuff. Whereas AI tends to be more technical or metaphysical these days. Um, what do you mean by bluejacking? Right, now I've used bluejacking in quotes there. You know, bluejacking um, these days is we're pretty much using a Bluetooth device like a phone or something 
to send a message to someone within your network's radius who didn't ask for the message. So you're basically jumping onto their system and people use it just as sort of a prank type thing. I'm not sure if it's been developed for any 